Caro, Caro, what is this? Oh, oh my god, Boris. I think I might have found an algorithm that is better than yours. Come, take a look. Okay. Dual pivot quicksort works just like quicksort, where one element is selected to be the pivot and the entire array is partitioned. The only difference is that dual pivot quicksort uses two pivot elements and partitions it into three categories. Let's take a look at it. Alright, so the first step is to identify your left pivot and your right pivot. It's going to be first element and the very last. One thing you have to make sure is that your left pivot or your first element is less than your right pivot, your last element. If they aren't, you're going to have to switch them. But in our case, we're lucky. We have 5 and 8. Now, the second step is you're going to have to partition your array into three subarrays relative to the pivots. So first subarray is going to be less than left pivot, greater than right pivot, and between left pivot and right pivot. Now let's start sorting the array. So our first number is 3. And we're going to check, is it less than left pivot? Our left pivot is 5, and 3 is less than 5. So this will go into this subarray. Our second element, 7. Is 7 less than left pivot? It's actually greater than 5. Now we check our right pivot. Is it greater than 8? No, it isn't. So it'll go in the middle. Our next element, 3. Is it less than 5? Yes, it is. So it'll go into this subarray. King. Is it less than 5? No. Is it greater than 8? Yes. So this will go into this subarray. 4. Is it less than 5? Yes. So it will go into our less than left pivot subarray. 9. Our last and final one. Is it less than 5? No. Is it greater than 8? Yes. So this will go in this subarray. Now that we've got our three different subarrays, we're going to have to use dual pivot quick sort again to sort within these subarrays. We're going to start by sorting our less than left pivot subarray. Now let's find our left pivot and our right pivot. So in this case, our left pivot would be 3 and our right pivot would be 4. Now let's check out our first element. 3 is greater than our left pivot but less than our right pivot so it's going to stay in the middle. As you can see, our subarray is already sorted for us, so we don't need to really do anything. Now we can move on to our next subarray. So now, as you can see, this subarray only contains one element, so it's already sorted for us. So now we can move on to our next and final subarray. So now let's identify our left pivot and right pivot in this subarray. So as you can see here, king is going to be our left pivot and the nine is going to be our right pivot. However, there is a problem. King is greater than 9, so we're going to have to switch these around. Now the king is our right pivot and the 9 is our left pivot. And since there are only two elements in the subarray, the subarray is already sorted for us. So now we have successfully sorted our array. Let's see our final sorted array. So now you have learned how to successfully sort any array using dual pivot quick sort. For big O notation, we're going to be comparing dual pivot quicksort to quicksort. The best, average, and worst case are both the same. The best case being n log n, average case being n log n, and worst case being n squared. But what sets dual pivot quicksort apart from quicksort is that its constant makes it marginally better than quicksort. Now although the worst case are the same for both of them, dual pivot quicksort will only reach n squared at a larger set of data compared to quicksort. 